And welcome to the show. Today is July 15th, 2022. And uh, we'll be talking about MMTLP because we recently have an S1 that's filed by Nextbridge. Let me start by saying that I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Today is July 15th, 2022, and let's get started. Let's move to the Twitterverse. We see John Burda making a reply tweet. He says, don't mean to be crass, but if you really think the spin-out is going to be worth 50 cents, you should be selling your MMTLP in your account and getting a buck 90 for it now. Why wait? Am I missing something? Um, yeah, because there's been a lot of FUD going around about the dividend being worth only 50 cents or whatever. Um, and this is how I woke up this morning. I, ch I saw this tweet by John Berta. I said, good morning and happy reading. He's got a link to the SEC.gov CGI browse. When you click the link, you get to here. And you see Nextbridge Hydrocarbons. You click the document link. That takes you to over here. Uh, you see some whole bunch of documents you see the one called s1 you click on that and you get to here this is in next bridge hydrocarbons s1 registration statement and this is what we've been waiting for metamaterials also made a press release this morning about next bridge hydrocarbons files registration statement for registration of its common stock so that's also available from the metamaterials uh, website so let's have a look at this uh, let's have a look at this s1 right let's see what it's about so we start by seeing that it's uh, it's about common stock for Nextbridge Hydrocarbons. It's a prospectus, and uh, and it's for the Series A preferred shareholders. Okay. The first thing I noticed right off the bat is that there's no dates, um, and you see a bunch of empty spaces for dates. So this is not necessarily a template. This is what has been submitted to the SEC. The SEC will be providing. Um, uh, comments and once all the comments are resolved then it will be filed right so it, 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 will, it will be approved so it has already been filed and and we're awaiting comments and it will be it will be approved but right now there are no dates because we don't know when when it will be approved typically these things take about 25 days okay so there are no dates right now okay second thing we note is that they talk about uh, 165 1,523, 363 shares of common stock, which is 100% of the outstanding shares of capital stock of the company. So there's 165 million shares of metamaterials. Uh, I'm sorry, there's 165 shares, 165 million shares of metamaterials, uh, Series A preferred, uh, preferred shares. And that's where this is coming from. Okay. And uh, one of the biggest questions people have is how many shares... You know, what's the, how many shares of this next bridge will you get? Turns out you'll be getting one share of Meta's non... So it turns out that you'll, if you have one share of the Series A non-voting preferred stock, or MMTLP, this will entitle the holder thereof to receive one share of common stock. So you will be getting one share of MMTLP will equal one share of next bridge hydrocarbons. Okay? So that's what the conversion ratio will be. Okay? The other thing to note is Meta currently owns all the outstanding shares of common stock of the company, and we have not sought to have this sh the shares of common stock traded on any exchange. Accordingly, there is, no, there is currently no public market for the common stock, and there is no current expectation for a public market to develop for the common stock. In other words, don't expect next bridge shares to be tradable. This will be, um, be it. Well, if, you, if you got the next bridge shares, you got it. Okay? It's non-tradable. Now, when we look at Nextbridge, this is their perspective summary. This is page one of the S1. And um, let's just start here. It says, we are an energy company engaged in the acquisition, exploration, exploitation, and or development of oil and natural gas properties in the United States. Well, there you go. That tells you what they are. It also tells you what they are not. They are not a next generation metamaterials company. This is purely oil and gas. The reason for Nextbridge being spun out is to spin out the oil and gas properties into its own entity where they can focus on oil and gas. And metamaterials can focus on next generation technologies of nanoscale, right? So this uh, isolates the two companies. Our primary focus has been the development 
of interest in an oil and gas project we hold in the Oro Grande Basin in, in West Texas. So this is about the Oro Grande Basin pro properties, basically. Okay. Oil production is expected to be sold at prices tied to spot oil markets. Huh? What? <laughs> We've gotten to page two. So, on page two, where we were talking about, about what this is about, we need to get some oil production in order to actually uh, make the oil be provable, right? We need to pump some oil, sell it in the market, and that makes it proved, okay? Same thing with natural gas. Our natural gas production is, expe is expected to be sold under short-term contracts and priced based on the first month index prices or on daily spot market prices. So they're going to produce some oil and gas, and they're going to sell them on exchanges. Okay. We will rely on our operating partners to market and sell our production, and that's an even better thing. So they themselves will not necessarily be producing the oil and gas. They'll get, have operating partners to produce the oil and gas and sell them. This is the way most things uh, operate. Your, uh, product, your operating partners can be large companies like, for instance, Shell Oil, I don't know, Exxon Mobil, uh, ConocoPhillips, um, Occidental Petroleum. These are much, much larger entities that will actually be doing the pumping of the oil and selling it into production, into market. Okay. We have a summary of the spinoff on page four. Uh, it gives all the relevant information, and in fact, it goes on for two more pages. Page four, five, and six, we have a summary of the spinoff, actually. And um, I, recommend you read the, the, uh, I recommend you read the summary pages. Note that the dates are still not filled in, of course, because they won't be filled in until we, un until we get to that approved point from the SEC. But uh, it basically tells you about the, you know, it, it, it tells you about the 165 million shares. It tells you that the, that the um, distributed company will be Nextbridge Hydrocarbons. Um, the, let's see what else, there are the main things up here. It tells you that the shares will not be traded, right? So, and it also tells you the transfer agent is American Stock Transfer and Trust Company, LLC. And gives you an, an idea of the risks. So check out pages four, five, and six of the S1. It's got a summary, and uh, as updates go in, they'll pro they'll probably go in there first. So let's go. Let's move on. Now I'm taking you all the way to page twenty-five of uh, of uh, uh, um, of the S1 filing. This one is called the spin-off. Okay, page twenty-five, and. Um, this provides more details of the actual spinoff. You've got the in-depth info as to what's going on here. And in fact, it goes on for page 25 to 27. So, uh, so this, this is the overall uh, deal with the spinoff. So these are some highlights that I thought were interesting. Meta will distribute to holders of its Series A preferred stock as a pro rata dividend one share of our, co of our common stock for every share of Series A preferred stock, outstanding as of blank 2022 the record date so this will happen in 2022 and um so we know that much but we don't know the exact date okay results of the spinoff after the spinoff we will be an independent company so basically they're going to be a private company immediately following the spinoff we expect to have approximately 64,000 share 64,000 holders of shares of our common stock meaning they expect to have 65,000 entities that our shareholders, okay? In, the compu in computing the number of holders of record, each broker-dealer and clearing corporation holding shares on behalf of its, of its customers, the holders of Series A preferred stock is counted as a series, as, is counted as a single shareholder. Basically, one guy can hold more than one share and a bunch, and et cetera, right? So the number of shares, they don't really, the number of shareholders, they don't know. The number of shares, they do know. A significant number of shares of our common stock are held in either nominee name or street name brokerage accounts, and consequently we are unable to determine the total number of beneficial owners of our common stock, meaning they can't tell you how many shareholders there are, but they are expecting to have about 64,000, okay? So most, and, and, and then they go to talk about how you can actually, how you'll actually be receiving this, dep depending upon where you're at. Again, page 25. Uh, this is 25 going on 26. Most Meta stockholders own their shares of Series A preferred stock beneficially through a bank, broker, or other nominee. That's the case for most people. Okay. 
The only case in which you don't is if you were a, um, uh, what is it? If you were an employee of the firm and you received the shares through a distribution, right? But in general, most stockholders, uh, they have the share um, through a beneficiary of a bank, broker, or other nominee, right? Um, and the Series A preferred stock is the MMTLP, right? The intention is they will credit your account with the, with the whole shares of our common stock that you receive in the distribution on or shortly after the distribution date. We don't know what the distribution date is, but that your account will be credited, okay? That's the way that works. These shares will not be eligible for electronic trading. They won't. There you go. If you sell any of your Series A preferred stock on or before the distribution date, you will not receive any shares of common stock. Basically, if you had the Series A preferred shares and you sold them, you won't be getting it. So if you want, uh, if you want to receive the next bridge shares, don't sell your Series A preferred stock. Okay. You will receive one share of our common stock for every share of Series A preferred stock you hold on the record date. We don't know what the record date is, but that's the record date. No fractional shares of common stock will be issued. Okay, there you go. If you got a share of uh, MMTLP, you'll get a share of the next bridge hydrocarbon stock. Okay, one for one. That's how that works. Next, we're going to go skip ahead all the way over to page 37. Uh, management discussion and analysis. This is man the, you know this is what management wants to highlight. One of the things is we are sat we satisfied the 2021 drilling obligations in the Argonne Day play, and in satisfying our 21 2021 op drilling obligations, we identified new potential pay zones not yet discovered in the Argonne Day play. Development of the play began during the 2022 fiscal year. Basically. Uh, they may have found some more oil and gas. Basically, they found a, you know, they were drilling, and then they found a region that has some more oil and gas. Where that is, we don't know. But we do know they found some more. So chances are that number might, you know, that number from $3.2 billion, I mean, I'm sorry, $3.2 billion barrels might go up. <clears throat> and it's, uh, and I believe it was about 3.7 billion barrels of oil equivalent, meaning, you know, if you take the nat nat gas into account. Next, we're going to page 43, and here we see that um, following the spinoff, we intend to make offers and enter into agreements with one or more of the other current working interest owners in the Oro Grande project. Huh? We anticipate offering the Oro Grande owners shares of common stock in exchange for their respective working interest in the Oro Grande project. The number of shares of common stock necessar necessary such that each participating Oro Grande owner would own the percentage of common stock then outstanding in proportion to the percentage owned in the working interest of the Oro Grande project. That's a big long sentence, okay? Basically what all these things mean is there will, will be more shares issued, okay? It's not going to stop at the, they don't plan to stop at 165 million shares. They plan to issue more shares. But these additional shares will be in exchange for more of the Oro Grande project asset, right? So the shares aren't going to be given away for free. The shares are not dilution. Your percentage of ownership of the asset will not change, the asset being the Oro Grande Basin asset. Uh, as there are other people who, own the, who are other owners of the Oro Grande Bas Basin asset, they can actually... Uh, exchange their shares, I mean, their ownership rights for shares, right? This puts everything into one unified pot, which is kind of convenient. It's nice. So more shares does not necessarily equal more, di does not equal dilution in this case. So it's actually, it's actually a good thing, right? Now we're talking about current projects. This is on page F12. We've skipped over to the appendix. I'm just skipping over to highlights. Uh, I recommend that you read the you know, the full S1 yourself. But I'm just going to go over the highlights here that I thought were interesting. So here, we are an energy company engaged in the acquisition, exploration, exploration, and development of oil and natural gas properties in the United States. We are primarily focused on the acquisition of early stage projects, the development and delineation of these projects, and the monetization of these assets once the activities are completed. They did not say 
they are an oil and gas producer. They, are, they tend to monetize those assets, which, may, which means that they may plan to make money from those assets, but not necessarily by pumping a lot of oil. We'll see, right? Development and delineation. Basically, they mean, that means they plan to drill. They, they might do some limited production in order to, you know, change the categorization, categorization to proved, you know, from probable or possible, right? And they, and they want to demonstrate the, the production potential, right? And that might require doing some limited production, right? So there you go. The other thing is that uh, they plan to monetize those assets. And that basically means... That basically means they plan to make money from them, and that is going to be either um, a... They're going to do either either do some production, limited or standard production, let's just say, and they're, and they're going to try to sell the asset, right? And um, that means you get to, you know, the, the, uh, the sale gets you to the proved category. Right? I mean, I'm sorry. The sale of oil and gas gets you to proved oil and gas, right? And at that point, you're selling the asset, and then you can say, look, we have proved oil and gas here, which increases the value of that oil and gas. Uh, now we're skipping ahead to, uh, to page F12. Uh, uh, to the bottom of, the, of F12, we note that they say, the company has drilled 14 test wells in the Orgrande properties in order to stay in compliance with the university land's um, uh, uh, continuous drilling clause, I believe, D&D &D unit agreement, as well as to test for potential shallow pay zones and deeper pay zones that may be present on structural pays, right? So there may be areas that are shallow in there that have a bunch of oil and that gas and that they may want to get a hold of. There may be areas that are deeper. They want to know how much oil and gas is there, right? <laughs> Development of the wells continued through the year ended December 31st, 2021 to further capture and document the scientific base in support of demonstrating the production potential of the property. They need to demonstrate the production potential of the property. And they drilled these 14 test wells. A bunch of wells were drilled. And that gets me to finance the finance section of this, uh, of this project, right? So next bridge, uh, we could see that these are the assets. This is on page F43. And if we look, they have a bunch of cash, about $5 million, okay? And the text associated with that cash says, this represents a loan agreement that is anticipated to be entered into with Meta, including interest expense, right? On June 28th, 2022, the company borrowed $2.34 million in an unsecured term loan, to the proceeds of which are available for our working capital and general corporate purposes, which is expected to be subject to the loan agreement. We expect that we will have the ability to elect to borrow additional term loans in an aggregated principal amount up to but not exceeding $5 million. The term loan will bear interest at a per annum rate of equal to 8%. So basically, Meta is getting 8% for some loans, which is a lot better than what they can get in the bank. And um, Meta Materials is getting some cash that they can use to basically fund next, next bridge hydrocarbons, right? Um, it's not enough to drill a bunch of wells, but it is enough to get, you know, to, to do what needs to be done in terms of running a company. So that's, that's what's going to be done with the money. We have an idea now. If we move on to, uh, if we also look at page nine, uh, again, of the, uh, which includes risk factors in the S1, we see that it says, our leases on oil and natural gas properties typically have a primary term of four to five years after which they expire unless prior to expiration drilling obligations are fulfilled or production is established within the, the spacing units covering the undeveloped acres drilling obligations are fulfilled okay that's a big deal so they have drilling obligations that need to be fulfilled or they need to go in, into production right as of march 31 2022 we had leases representing approximately 134,066 net acres in the Orgrande basin in west texas expiring in 2022 if we failed to drill five wells as obligated. Okay, so, so they need to drill five wells. The leases in the Argrande Basin are also subject to expiration in 2023 in the event we fail to drill an additional five wells. So they need to drill five more wells. We will require additional capital to drill these wells, meaning that they don't have enough money to, to drill the wells right now. And we may not be able to obtain additional capital when required in order to, to drill these wells or on favorable terms. This, the, that last part is because it's in the risk section, right? It's in the risk factor section. So basically, they, 
they still need to drill five wells in 2022 and drill five wells in 2023, and they will need financing to do this. And judging by the amount of oil that's there, they're likely to get the financing. Okay. And I was going to say one last thing. I happen to note, they say in their document, we do not expect to pay cash dividends on our common stock in the foreseeable future. This is on page 51 under liquidity and capital resources of the S1, of the S1 um, Next Bridge Hydrocarbons uh, uh, registration document. Okay. We do not expect to pay cash dividends on our common stock in the foreseeable future. Does that mean we're not going to get paid? What's, what's the deal here? No. They don't expect to pay cash dividends. Okay. Cash. <laughs> you won't be getting cash for this. The payout, I think, will be likely to be in the form of a stock swap with whatever company wants to buy the assets, right? So let's say it's, uh, I don't know, Occidental Petroleum or ConocoPhillips. You might wind up with Occidental Petroleum shares. You might wind up with ConocoPhillips shares. But they'll be equal to the cash value that, that it represents, right? That, that's basically it. Um, so what are people saying about the S1 now at this point? Well, let's look at some tweets and see some reactions in the Twitterverse. Let's look at John Berta. This is his high points. He says, here are the high points in my opinion. Next bridge will be private. No ticker. No DTC eligibility. But public filings due to a number of holders. Okay. New management team is super strong and will be developing the field in the near term. Nice. High points continued. Once the SEC approves, the spin-out will occur and preferred shares will be cancelled, likely 15 days after next bridge gets approval. They don't have approval yet. After they approve, then there'll be a countdown. Okay. If you own the preferred shares, make sure your brokerage sends your, sends your now private shares back to AST for two reasons. Okay. And the reasons are to keep your new shares at ASD and not at your broker or proper credit for your shares. And since, since there'll be no ticker, NextBridge needs a way to communicate effectively with its shareholders. So what's AST? <laughs> Why are you talking about AST? Who are they? <laughs> what's the deal? Um, I didn't mention much about AST before because if you look in the, if you look in the, in the summary of the, of the spinoff, page four, five, and six, you'll see that AST is the, is a transfer agent Okay, they're the American Stock Transfer and Trust Company LLC. They're they're the guys who you know who get the shares of the stock, and um, you can hold it with them. And what does it mean if you hold it with them? It means that they'll basically just hold the stock for you. If you want to sell your shares, there's no market that you can sell to with a bid ask spread and all that. But if you know someone who wants to buy it, that doesn't mean that you can't make a deal with whoever wants to buy your shares. Okay. But it'll be a private deal. It won't be going through a public market. That's the main thing, right? There's no way to stop anyone from selling anything, right? If you want a car, you should be able to sell, to sell your car, right? That, it's that kind of thing. So, um, so the, these are the um, uh, um, the main tweets from John Berta. Uh, the S one has been filed with the SEC as of as of July fifteenth. And the next steps, I believe, are that the SEC needs to approve the S-1, which can take about 25 days or so after the S-1 has been filed. And then next bridge needs to spin out, which might take another 15 days after the approval. So we're talking about 20, 25 plus 15, 30, 40, about 40 days or so. You know, you know, who knows? Around there. Keep this in mind. It's not instantly. Now, John Berta, he's also got some additional opinions. Continued. He says, next rich new management team will be 100% in charge of the company. This means they can stay private, go public, uh, go public down the road, um, sell out completely, pay dividends as production allows, do whatever, right? All the options are on the table for the new management. So there you go. The new management can do whatever it wants. All options are on the table. We see uh, C Plant reply to uh, John Berta. C Plant's pretty good. The trend is your friend. It basically says, FYI, everyone, this is the beginning, not the end. Hold tight and read everything three times. And um, he's got a link to the, uh, to the documents. And he also says, stay calm, adhere to the timeline, and everything should run as smoothly as possible. Also keep in mind, it typically takes the SEC approximately 25 days to provide initial comments on your Form S-1 filing, not including any additional S-1As amended that will be required. This is the longest of the pre-IPO stages, so give yourself 10 to 14 weeks to complete it. So it could take a while for them to actually get through the whole S1 process, right? 
And the other important thing is I would also suspect that market makers and short hedge funds are going to hit MMAT as hard as possible to shake you out. Don't fall for it. Just buy it or hold. They are burnt toast now. Sure. Sorry, mofos. <laughs> um, yeah, there you go. Um, you're going to be hit hard. Um, they're going to go after MMTLP um, as hard as they can, and they're going to go after MMAT because they're going to figure that, you know, if MMAT drops in price a lot, you might lose um, you might lose sympathy and hope in MMTLP. But the two are different. The two are different. Finally, he says, read the fine print. If you take away nothing else from the S1, take this information. Last paragraph below. We identified new pay zones not yet discovered in the Oro Grande play, right? He says, we satisfied the 2021 drilling obligations in the Oro Grande play. And in satisfying our 2021 drill obligations, we identified new potential pay zones not yet discovered in the Oro Grande play. Development of the play began in the, during the 2022 fiscal year. There you go. Okay. New pay zones not yet discovered. So there's, uh, there's probably more oil and gas there than we originally thought. More oil and gas than we originally thought. How much? We don't know yet. No. But we do know what happened to MMTLP stock today. This, this information was released pre-market trading in the early morning. And um, MMTLP was hit as hard as it could be by the short hedge funds who are desperate to, to try to get the MMTLP shares. And they pushed the price down a whopping $0.05 cents to a buck eighty-six. It's down 2.62%. They want your shares, basically, because they know that the payout could be very damaging to them, I think. What does that say to, what does all this information say to me about the valuation of the M MMTLP shares? If you may recall, I made this chart a while back. Um, it looks at the price of oil and compares that to uh, a dividend estimate, right, based upon the COGS cost of oil, I know how much it costs to pump oil out of the ground, right? What the estimated reserves are, this is based on 3.2 billion barrels of oil, not 3.7, not, not any additional that we found right now, right? And uh, the discount for the value of oil on the ground is 12%. It takes into account the revenue interest, which is 49%. It does not take into account any corporate tax rate because, uh, you know, we're thinking that, it, that, that this could happen in a non-taxable manner, right? It's going to be a stock, stock swap of some type, so it's not going to be uh, easily taxed, we think. And uh, th at the time, the number of shares here I used was 164,923,363. That is a slightly smaller number than the 165 million shares that was in the S1. So the, these numbers are slightly off, but not by much. They're off by less than 1%. <laughs> I think, okay? And the natural gas value for this is, of course, zero dollars. So the nat gas is a bonus. So I'm saying, you know, what that basically means is don't expect cash dividends for, for a common stock. We know that it's not gonna be in the form of cash dividends, but the payout could be in the form of a stock swap with whichever company buys the assets. I said that earlier, right? So that means they should be able to either keep or sell the stock, of whatever stock we get, and the value of that stock will be equal to the cash value that we see here. So you won't be getting cash, but you'll be getting stock that's equal in value but from whatever oil company is buying this stock. And you can choose to either keep or sell the stock, right? Based upon, you know, how you want to take your dividend in terms of taxable or non-taxable events, okay? And of course, it's all based upon the price of oil. So if we look at the price of oil recently, the price of oil has fallen from $120 per barrel to down to $94 a barrel. But it's still above the one-year average price, which is 88.529. Almost $88.53 per barrel of oil right now is the average price looking back over a whole year. Okay? Which means that we're in this range. We're between... 88.53 to 94.21 is what you can expect the payout to be for the price of oil. So the payout, is, I'm, I'm guessing, will be worth in the, na in the approximate range of between $55 to $60. Uh, that's getting to be a tighter range now, $55 to $60. As time goes on, the range gets tighter. Now, where was this a year ago? I mean, at the start of the year, it was 
uh, the price of oil was around, one year average was around $68.74. And that meant that we're down in around the, 35, the 31 to $35 price range for value, right? We're now between the 55 to, 60 to $61 fit, uh, price range. In summary, we see that the S1's been filed with the SEC. Next bridge will be, you know, so MMTLP will result in a dividend of next bridge shares. The next bridge shares are only available for metamaterials, right? The shorts must deliver next bridge shares to the broker dealers who will deliver to the longs, okay? The shorts have no access to the next bridge shares. They are trapped. The only real possible solution for the shorts is to close their MMTLP short positions before the last day of trading. When that is, we don't know yet. This means that shorts have to buy MMTLP if they wish to avoid the delivery of next bridge before the last day of trading, right? That's what they got to do, by definition almost. Right? So on the very last day of trading of MMTLP, the shorts and the broker dealers for the shorts must deliver the next bridge shares to the longs. And that means the next bridge, and we all know next bridge shares will not be tradable, so they're trapped. There is a distinct possibility that the price may squeeze, and it may squeeze to some absurd levels. We, it's hard to say. No one can tell the future. No one knows. But I can tell you that I'm not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. And this information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. I can also tell you, don't just listen to what I have to say. Check out these other channels. Roller Pigeons has, she's got a video out already. I haven't had a chance to look at it, but I'm sure it's pretty good. She's got a really good take on all of the stuff. She knows her stuff. Terry Yonkers has a video out. Uh, check him, uh, check out his channel. Check him out. Um, I think he had a live stream at that time, at the time that I'm making the, at the time I'm making this video at least. Uncle Smokey did not have a video out, but he's probably going to have one out soon, so check his channel out. And lately, Alia Trading Secrets uh, has been talking a lot about MMTLP, so, um, and he's been providing some really good info on that. So he, he, he might have something about this coming up this weekend. So that's my take on MMTLP and NextBridge and the S1 that's been filed. Uh, we've got some answers to some long-awaited questions. And let me end by saying that I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Have a good weekend. Good night. Goodbye.